Greetings, my friend, and welcome to the podcast, Teaching That Transforms, with Dr. Jimmy Knott. Thanks so much for joining me for this episode. I'm continuing with a new season of episodes on just one of my favorite subjects in all of life, and I think one of the most important. Been a student and practitioner, still a learner, and that's the subject of leadership. The subject of leadership. I'm calling this season, It's All About Leadership with a subtitle of Be a Leader Worth Following. By the way, that is the same title as my book that's available on Amazon. I really do encourage you to purchase it because I think it will be a helpful resource for this uh, season on on leadership podcast. You can also find it on my website, jimmynott.com, jimmynott.com, J-I-M-M-Y-K-N-O-T-T dot com. So welcome, welcome to A Leader Worth Following. It's all about leadership. Everything, 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 says John Maxwell, rises and falls on leadership. Leaders are so very important. And as I heard a friend say one time many years ago, when a leader gets better, everything, everything, and everyone, I think, by the way, tends to get better. Leadership. Leadership's about getting results through people, about getting results through people. And it raises the question, how do you become a leader, not with a title or position or authority, but a leader worth following. You may have a title, you may have a position, and you may have authority, but worth following is the key. And my life leadership verse is Psalm 78, 72, where Asaph writes about David, and David shepherded them with integrity of heart, with skillful hands he led them. Three key components, three key foundational rocks. To become a leader worth following. Authentic character. We looked at that uh, a couple of episodes ago. Character is our core, our integrity. It's whether or not we're trustworthy. It's always doing the right thing. In a recent episode, we looked at the second component, skillful hands, which refers to exceptional competency. Exceptional competency. That takes place when someone knows what to do, that could come through education, could come through experience, through training, seminars, whatever, who knows what to do and knows how to do it. There's have the skills, abilities, the talent uh, to get it done. And then third has the discipline, the work ethic, uh, the commitment, the perseverance, the grit to get it done. A leader worth following practices exceptional competence by doing what they do best most of the time. And frankly, in order to do what you do best, most of the time requires that you know what you do best. We can only do a few things exceptionally well. We can do a lot of things average, and even if we focus on our weaknesses, they'll never be better than average, and we'd probably be worn out getting there. So discovering and I think the best way to discover those few things you do best is, is a combination of assessments. Uh, they're very objective, and there are a multitude of those assessments on my website at jimmynot.com, jimmynot.com. And uh, there are a lot that are collated there, so you don't have to go searching everywhere for them as well. So in the second way is feedback. Just asking people who know you well and just simply asking them, what do you think that I do best? What do you think that I do best? And then I would ask them while you're there, what are some things you don't think I'm good at? And just simply listen. Don't agree or disagree, just simply listen. And I think you'll see there will be some connection between the objective assessments in terms of analyzing skills and abilities and talents and the more subjective and asking friends and family. I think you'll see some things come together. But today, but today we pick up with this third big rock, uh, which uh, going back to the verse, and David shepherded them, the shepherd of them. So much, uh, so much rich truth and how a shepherd related to his sheep. Most shepherds in uh, that day when the verse was written um, had flocks, uh, I don't know, 75 to 100 sheep. But they were intimately acquainted with all of them and, and named, frankly, uh, uh, most of them, if not all of them, and deeply, deeply, deeply cared uh, for the sheep and, and, and feeding and watering and shearing and uh, protecting uh, them and ensuring uh, that they had everything that they needed to, to, to be safe and, and, and to grow. Well, that's a lot of what leaders need to do, as it were, to their sheep. 
So today, this episode is about building those important all relational connections. So let me begin with a statement. Relationships. Relationships help us to define who we are, good or bad, and what we become, success or failure. How do you feel about that statement? Because you and I really are products of all the relationships of our life. Those have impacted us. First, our parents and grandparents, uh, maybe guardians, uh, maybe coaches, teachers, uh, friends, peers, uh, uh, colleagues, uh, bosses, managers. Uh, those people have uh, relationships with those people have helped define who we are and what we become. I think it would be safe to say that relationships have always been God's plan for us. It's uh, from the beginning when he created Adam, said it's not good for man to be alone. Life and leadership are all about people and relationships. People and relationships. And I really do believe that uh, being able to connect with people will determine uh, how much success you enjoy as an influential leader. When Jesus was asked, think about this, to summarize the most important command. Remember what his response was? You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, mind, soul, and strength, and you shall love your neighbor as yourself. What separates Christianity from all other religions is this. Our faith, the faith, is built upon two, two relationships. Love God, that's the vertical relationship, and the love people, that's the horizontal. Growing healthy connections and relationships are essential both to life and leadership. We can never be effective leaders worth following unless we foster growing, healthy relationships. Because leadership is all about accomplishing things through others. Through others. Everything that you and I hope to accomplish as a leader will be done by others. In fact, we're really not leading if we can do it ourselves. If we can do it ourselves. So David shepherded them. It's all about making meaningful relational connections. You know, when you, uh, when, you, uh, when, you, uh, uh, when you go to work, when you enter the workforce, there are two skills that are often talked about. There's those technical uh, skills that are, that are so very important. Many of these are uh, uh, natural talents developed, uh, learned ability skills that we get from uh, uh, education, experience, uh, practice, uh, their technical skills, presenting, analyzing, and so on. In some research, in fact, it was research that was done by Stanford Research Institute, also Harvard University, and also the Carnegie Foundation. They discovered that about 85% of the reason people get a job, keep that job, and move ahead in that job has to do with their people skills. Some people call that soft skills. I like people. It has to do with their people skills and knowledge. 85%. That is so so significant. Soft skills including empathy and listening and teamwork and problem solving and work ethic and flexibility and you know conflict resolution and and perhaps many 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 more. So very very important. And the deeper the better the more healthy the relationship frankly the greater the influence. If you and I were to look at a at a graph where there's a, a horizontal axis and a vertical axis, and a horizontal axis was relational equity, how well we connect with people, and the vertical had to do with the influence, capacity to impact people. I'm telling you, as the relational equity grows, the influence grows as well. So does your influence as well. You've ever wondered why some people have greater influence than others? It's probably because they invest more in others. You can impress people to some degree from a distance, but you can really only influence them up close, and that requires relationship. Listen, you can be good at your job and maybe even have weak character and be a jerk relationally. None of those are a winning combination. None of those. You may remember way back, Jesus called those disciples first to be with them. That's relational. Then he sent them out to preach. That's directional. Or vision. They were called to be with him first and foremost. Great leaders value both results and relationships. And honestly, the results stem from the relationships. The better the relationships, the better the results. So, what does it take to build healthy and meaningful relationships? How do you go about excelling and connecting with others? Well, is it something you're born with? 
Eh, maybe. Is it a certain personality? I'm sure that helps, true to some extent. If you're not a great people person, can you still develop and enjoy meaningful relationships? No doubt. And I'm a perfect, perfect example of that. Of the three components of authentic character, exceptional competency, and relational connection, probably this one is my weakest, and my weakest. But it's so critically important. It may never become my strength, but it can be less of a weakness through deliberately working on it and doing practices that will help build more meaningful relationships. We don't want to be like these people who put these actual statements on job applications that really show their lack of, uh, uh, of relational equity. One said, it's best for employers if I don't work with people. Another, the company made me a scapegoat just like my previous employers. Note, please don't misconstrue my 14 jobs as job hopping. I have never quit a job. References, none. I've left a path of destruction behind me. Connecting, building relationships. And it's not easy. It's certainly not easy in a device-driven world. We've never been more efficient, but yet we've never been less personal and less relational. We're just so lacking in social skills. So much of that having to do with the, uh, our face and devices and not connecting with people. We're less connected than we've ever been because we're more distracted by, uh, by, uh, by the devices. In spite of the efficiency and technology of email and Twitter and text, we've never been more in touch and at the same time out of touch. By the way, how many contacts are in your phone or on your devices? How many? I bet it's a lot, a lot more than you could imagine. Why don't you make a guess and then go look and see how many there is? It probably will amaze you. I have a friend, Steve Saccone, uh, and he's uh, 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 authored a couple of books. But one of those, uh, I think back in 2009, was called Relational Intelligence. In the book, in the book, by the way, on my website, uh, I have his, he gave me permission, his uh, relational intelligence uh, uh, assessment. And uh, it's, uh, it's a very uh, interesting and informative uh, assessment. It's one of the most popularly used and accessed assessments on my website. So I would encourage you to go there. But in his book, he talks about the top 10 relational sins. These are things that we don't do unless we want to kill a relationship. And I think they're, they're kind of funny, but they're also informative. Number 10, don't assume your way is always best. That usually means it's not. Number nine, don't give unsolicited advice. People usually prefer to trust you first. Eight, see how long you can go without promoting yourself. It's harder than you think. Seven, don't state the obvious just because you don't have anything profound to say. Sometimes silence is golden. Don't be bossy. Number six, remember kindergarten when they taught you, where they taught you no one likes a know-it-all. No one likes a know-it-all. Five, stop avoiding conflict, but don't create it either. Four, don't self-deprecate for appearance sake. That's what your spouse or significant other is for. Three, don't talk more than you do. Two, Fight the temptation to one-up someone with a better story than theirs. It may be hard to believe, but sometimes people do have better stories than we do. And then number one is don't appear more engaged than you are. People usually know it when you're faking. So, practically speaking, what are, what are the keys to connecting with people, whether it's at family or it's at work? How do we build better and more meaningful relationships? Well, I have some suggestions, I have some tips, and I hope they're helpful. Number one, be comfortable with who you are. Be comfortable with who you are. Do you like you? Be at ease in your own skin. How we see ourselves impacts how we see and relate to others. It all starts with you. How do you want people to experience you? What's it like being on the other side of you? Think through that. Be comfortable with you. It's, we're not really motivated to give ourselves away in connecting and building relationships if we don't like ourselves. Number two, unconditionally love those, unconditionally love, that's right, love those that you are privileged to influence. 
mistake. How do you do that? Well, care for your followers first as people. Know them, empower them, value them, uh, appreciate them, love them, protect them. And I would say as a general rule, care more about the relationship than the rules or the regulations. So important. Because if I heard someone say, being a leader, being a leader, it's less about being in charge and more about taking the care of the people in your charge. Number three, look for every opportunity to use your influence for their good. Their good. Let go of your needs and wants. One of the highest, well, in fact, it is the highest motivator for employees in the workforce is achieving, getting results, winning at work, getting done what needs to be done. That's the highest motivator there. Yet, yet, only one in four employees say their manager gives them any form of recognition for a job well done. One in four, 25, 25%. That's so, so disappointing. So disappointing. We'll come back to that recognition in a minute, but helping people get things done is really important. Number four, as their leader, remain accessible, approachable, and accountable. And accountable. Your followers, I'm telling you, have four questions about you as a leader. And how you answer those, how you answer those, really determine, really determine how well you connect to them. Number one, can I trust you? That's frankly about their character and integrity. Number two, can you actually help me? Do you have the competency to help me? Number three, do you really care for me? And number four, are you for me, against me, or for yourself? In other words, really, whose side are you on? Whose side are you on? Number five, remain authentic and transparent with others. Remain authentic and transparent. Let them see. Let them know your heart. Be transparent. Be vulnerable. Be sure they know what pleases you and what frustrates you as their leader. That's really could be true, certainly, of your spouse or significant other. People don't, people don't know for sure. So tell them. Fight pride. Fight ego. Cultivate. Be likable. Do the people that you know and that you work with. Do they like you? People, listen, people don't leave managers. Excuse me. They do. People don't leave companies. They leave managers. Next, I think this would be number six. Lead people gently. Do not try to control them. We live in a world where a lot of leadership is uh, uh, command and control, dominating, manipulating, intimidating, creating fear. We need to learn to steward our authority and our influence well. Always think, how are people leaving? What are they feeling when they leave me? Because what people remember about us is how we made them feel. After a conversation, when people leave a conversation with you, are they energized or are they deflated? Are they encouraged or are they discouraged? How are you making people feel when they walk away? Listen, there are a lot of things you can say to, to help build meaningful relationships. Things like, I believe in you. I trust you. I could be wrong. What do you think? How can I help? I need your help. What do you need? I'm here for you. How are you feeling? I really do appreciate you. Those are such important phrases to say in gently leading people. Number seven, strive to be a good and active listener. A good and active listener. And this is a skill anyone and everyone can develop. Admittedly, I will uh, tell you that this is something I struggle with. But it's something that I'm growing in and getting better at, and I encourage you to do the same. Look in the eyes. Pay attention. Focus. Make these people, make the person on the other side feel heard and understood. Be curious. Ask questions. Uh, go on. Tell me more. Uh, that's interesting. How would you do that? Just ask questions to bring more out of them. That's so very important. Number eight, strive to not overreact to what I would call the small stuff. If you want to build relationships, don't be overly sensitive. Don't be thin-skinned. And don't feel like you've got to win every battle. You may win every battle, but you're going to damage the relationship. Learn to aggressively, aggressively forgive. Give grace. Give forgiveness. Because to be honest, 
you'll need it. Number nine, recognize those who get the job done in the right way. Listen, you're out there listening. Raise your hand if you're sick and tired of all the praise that you get at work. Not happening. Not happening, is it? People need to be recognized. In fact, if achieving results is the number one motivator for people, number two is recognition. Number two is recognition. People are motivated by recognition. People, we don't have to, it's not necessarily about raises and bonuses or promotions. It could be as simple as thank you, uh, saying it looks like a really good job. I appreciate all your effort on that project. Thank you for working so hard to get this to me in the short time that was available. I could never do it as well as you do it. And, you know, on and on, those kind of uh, appreciation and recognition statements go. Listen, over-appreciate people, if anything. Be thankful. Show gratitude. And then number 10, cultivate deeper relationships with a few vital friends. few vital friends. We've, most of us have dozens and dozens and dozens of, uh, of acquaintances, uh, but they're more our circle. Vital friends are insiders. These are non-family people that we love to spend time with. It could be friends or it could be people that we work with, but these are people, though, that we could call at 2 o'clock in the morning or they could call us. They could knock on our door at any time and come in. They are just vital, vital friends. Remember earlier I told you uh, how many uh, uh, names are in your contact list? Probably dozens, maybe hundreds or hundreds I know that are, that are in mine. Outside of your family, if you had to go into the contact list, who are the three or four people that you would pick to be pallbearers at your celebration service? Those, my friend, are vital friends. Vital friends. So, what can we do? How can we kind of better connect with people? You know, I believe that there is a, there's a sequence that helps us get connected better with people. Just imagine with me, we want to influence people. We want people to follow us. Not because I'm the boss, but because I've earned that. How have you earned that? Because you've built trust. That's the glue. Well, how have you built trust? the glue of trust. Well, you connected with them. How do you connect? You show people your heart. You're vulnerable and you're transparent. Listen, there's a sequence in building meaningful relational connections. People will not follow a leader they do not trust. People will not trust a leader they don't connect with. People find it difficult to connect with leaders if they don't know their heart don't know their heart. So, I always like to end with practicality. Building meaningful relationships is so important as a leader, but what are the outcomes? What are the results if, a, if an employee becomes more connected to their leader? Well, I think there's several things. They tend to perform more at the top of their game. They're more engaged, more energetic, more optimistic. Uh, they're, uh, they give greater effort. They go above and beyond when they're more connected to their, uh, uh, to their manager. They tend to align their behaviors more with the, the organizational mission and purpose and goals, which means that kind of everybody's pulling in the same direction. I think connected employees improves the quality of decisions. As people get more trusting and comfortable, there's greater collaboration. And when there's greater collaboration, people are more likely to speak up and you make better decisions and come up with greater innovation as well. And I know that there are many, many, many others. I'm telling you, friend, God does some of his best work in life and leadership in the context of relationships, in the context of relationships. Your ability, my ability to excel in relationships, frankly, will determine our success as a leader. Remember, Leading others is less about being in charge and more about taking care of those in your charge. Be the leader that you've always wanted by intentionally connecting with people. Thanks for watching and listening to Teaching the Transforms with Dr. Jimmy Knott. Remember, 
Teaching only transforms when it's consistently practiced. I look forward to you joining me the next time.